What's going on workforce? Brian here and today we're going to be talking about the age-old debate frames per second and resolution and what it means for Destiny 2. It does also go beyond just Destiny 2 but let's just do this thing. So if you aren't aware of it this week Bungie showed off Destiny 2 and during various Q&A's and then having people play the game they talked about how the game on PS4 Pro and Xbox One, not Scorpio, they specifically said, we're not talking about Scorpio, said that the game's gonna be locked at 30 frames per second at a 4K resolution, and that the GPU was plenty powerful enough on a PS4 Pro to do the game in 4K. However, on PC, it's going to be at 60 frames unlocked, meaning that if you've got a powerful enough PC, you could even go beyond 60 frames per second. So this has sparked a lot of controversy and a lot of debate regarding the importance of frames per second, the importance of resolution in games, what it means for Destiny 2, what it means for maybe the pro uh, Project Scorpio. Would it be fair that if that you know system ran the game at 60 frames per second, can that game run it at 60 frames per second? Is this an issue with the development tools of Destiny and <sighs> scene. Now with all that being said, one clear stat stands out above them all. And it's that in 2017, Destiny 2 will be the only first person shooter that does not support 60 frames per second. Games like Rainbow Six Siege, Star Wars Battlefront, Halo 5, Battlefield 1, Gears of War 4, Doom, Overwatch, and Titanfall 2. All of these games run at a buttery smooth 60 frames per second. Now, kind of with the star and asterisk next to Halo 5, to do this, to accomplish that 60 frames per second locked rate on Xbox One, they used a technology that they developed called dynamic resolution scaling. So instead of either dropping frames or having to run at a lower frame rate, they locked it at 60 and let the resolution scale. The thing is, is that you're gonna notice your frame rates changing first before you notice any resolution scaling. So frame rate and resolution are important to your games. I'm not trying to communicate that they aren't. However, there are some general myths that people have. Like the eye can see actually more than 24 frames per second. The difference between video, like a movie and a video game, 30 and 60, like what, of all, what does all that mean? There's so many numbers, there's so many opinions. One of the studies, and you can see it on the screen, show that the higher frame rate, especially at 60, are gonna have better performance and a better experience for the end user. You lower the frame rate and their ability to do simple tasks becomes a little bit more challenging. So they also introduce latency into that equation and see how it affects the overall performance of the game. But you can see that at 60 frames per second, users are more able to do these tests. And there have been numbers of studies that have shown that. And the reason is, is because the eye is oscillating. And I've got some links in the description below for some of these articles if you really want to get into the nitty gritty science of all of it. But now I want to kind of shift a little bit of focus onto the hardware of the PS4 Pro, a little bit of the Scorpio and how it relates to that obviously versus PC. Now we know the PC can handle it, especially if you got the money you could throw into it. Your PC pretty much can do anything. That's why I think PC Master Race is usually the hashtag of any of this, especially that the game's coming to PC. But what does the CPU and the GPU matter? And you think of when we're talking about frame rate and resolution, this is a very simplified explanation, but your frame rate is more or less determined by your CPU and your resolution is more or less determined by your GPU. Now, your GPU can also be a bottleneck for your CPU. So if the GPU can't keep up, if you're trying to send it too large of an image to draw to the screen, yes, it's going to affect your frame rate and thus slow down your CPU. Think of your CPU as your Red Mage, your Swiss Army Knife. It's able to do a lot of varying things. And your GPU is a specialized job like a Black Mage that's really focused in on you know, trying to draw the graphics to the screen as you know quickly as possible. And all of this is happening when we talk about the frame rate, when we talk about this within a second, and that's what's happening. And so the GPU being that how powerful it is, is what's determining the resolution. And so when you look at the PS4 Pro and the Scorpio, they've both increased the processing power of their GPUs, thus allowing for that 4K native resolution in most games if they decide to support it. So some very large images. If your TV doesn't support 4K, well, you know, then you're not going to get really any benefit out of that, or at least what you think. 
that shifts back into the CPU. So the bottleneck here, and this kind of ties to what Luke Smith said in the interview, is the CPU. The GPU can handle 4K. The CPU, with everything that they have going on in the game, is what's locking it at 30 frames per second on the PS4 Pro. So according to the specs of the Scorpio that's released, they showed that the CPU is 30% faster. The GPU is well over 400% faster, but the CPU is just 30% faster. So it's going from 1.75 gigahertz to a 2.3 gigahertz CPU. It's also got 12 gigs of GDR5 RAM, which will help the CPU because the RAM speed and the CPU speed, all of that has a factor. You could easily lose out on tons of performance by not using correct parts, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Now the PS4 has a 1.6 gigahertz processor and the PS4 Pro has a 2.1 gigahertz processor. So Xbox has always had a faster processor when it comes uh, to that over the PS4 models, but the GPU on the PS4 was way more powerful than the Xbox One, and this time with Scorpio, it's a little bit reversed, and Scorpio still has the better processor. So obviously, out, ruling out Destiny's engine as being the real bottleneck in this situation, it is possible that Project Scorpio could run this game at 60 frames per second. And if that's the case, then the question shifts that wouldn't Microsoft want to limit Scorpio to 30 frames per second so that players on the original Xbox One versus Scorpio wouldn't be left in the dust? And that actually isn't the case. Mike Bar came out and said this just the other day that no, Microsoft is not going to restrict developers to make sure that if the game runs on the Xbox versus the Xbox Scorpio, to have them in parallel. And so that actually becomes, and he says it's actually a, a question of the developer's decision on that point. So Microsoft isn't going to require Bungie to make it run at 30 frames per second on Scorpio. And I think it is actually in their interest to say, hey, it can run 60 on Scorpio. Now, I don't know if that's a limitation that the PlayStation has put in place, but we're just gonna take Luke Smith at his word that the CPU isn't something that can actually handle it at this point. So shifting back, and I guess the final question, like I said, the feedback that I want from you guys, the conversation that I wanna have is that if Destiny 2 on console is at only at 30 frames per second and you have the option to run the game on PC at 60, does that sway your decision? I know a lot of people were like, hey, we're gonna play on PlayStation, and that makes a lot of sense, but now there is people who are having that internal debate. And what, and what if, if Destiny could just say, okay, our PvE environment is at uh, 30 frames per second, but in PvP, where it really matters, we're gonna go ahead and say that that's okay to do 60. Is that a limitation of the engine? Is that a limitation of the console? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Anyway, for work to game my name's Brian. I thanks so much for watching this video, and I really hope to see you in my next. But until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Take care. Hey guys, Chris here. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see our next video, go ahead and click right there. If you'd like to see our vlog, click down below. The subscribe button should be right below me here, and you should see all of our contact information. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.